In this episode, we're going to implement a 2D drag system so you can move items around on a 2D game like this. This will be useful in a game such as a jigsaw. Let's get started. We'll start by creating a standard 2D Unity project called Drag2D. First, create just a standard square sprite and drag it to our asset so it will become a prefab. That will make it easy to create multiple copies of it later. Now there are two ways we could create a drag logic. Either we can create it on a script that will attach to each object we want to be draggable, or we can cast rays ourselves from a single script and manage it in there. They each have their own benefits and drawbacks, and you'll likely use both at some point. No matter which one we choose, we must ensure our sprites have a box collider 2D so that it can detect a mouse click. So first up, let's create a per item script to do the drag logic. Let's add a script to the square called drag. We're going to need two helper variables here, a boolean to tell us if we're currently dragging the object and a vector3 offset, more on that later. As the script is attached to the object in question, we can leverage the onMouseDown and onMouseUp functions to detect the drag start and end. So in onMouseDown, we want to set our boolean dragging to true and in onMouseUp, we set it to false. We can then test this in the update method if we're dragging, then we set the position of the object to where we've clicked. To convert from the screen location to the point in the world, we're going to use camera.main.screen2world point. This will be fine so long as we clicked exactly on the center of the object, and it will center it underneath your cursor. So to manage this, we need to make use of an offset variable. In the on mouse down, we can simply take the difference between the object position and where we've clicked, and then we can add that offset in the update method. I've duplicated the square here a few times and we can see that it's working as intended. Excellent. If for some reason you did want to snap the objects to the center, you could remove the offset, but you must be careful because the screen to world point function will return the Z coordinate on the camera plane, which would be outside the viewable area. In that case, you'd want to cache the object's original Z position. Now onto our second method. I'll delete the drag script from our square prefab and we'll create an empty game object with a new script called drag all. As before, we'll need two variables to make this work. This time we have our dragging variable as a transform rather than a boolean because we'll need to know which objects transform we're moving and the offset as before. We handle all the actions in the update method. We'll use input.getMouseButton down and zero meaning the left button to detect when we press on the objects, and get mouse button up when we release them. For clicking on the object, we need to detect what we've pressed on, so we have to cast our own ray. We do this using physics2d.raycast. The first argument is where we're sending the ray from, which is our mouse position using screen to world point again. The second is the direction to send the ray. We want it to go straight into the screen, so vector2.0 gives us no movement in the x or y directions. If this hits, then we set our dragging transform to the transform of the object that it was hit, and we record our offset as before. Now in mouse up, we stop dragging by setting our transform back to null. And whilst we're dragging, we update the position as before. And here that is in action. We can now click and drag on all the objects. But let's add a hexagon. Maybe we don't want to be able to move the hexagon. Currently, we can move everything. One way to do this would be to put all the objects you want to move into a layer. So for the square, we'll go into the Layer tab and add a layer called Movable. Here, I've arbitrarily put it as Layer 9, and we'll make sure we set the square prefab to the Movable layer. Now back in the code, we want to specify which layers are acceptable in our raycast. To achieve this, we need the function prototype which has distance as its third parameter and layer mask, the important one, as its fourth. I don't know how big your scene is in the Z direction, so we'll just put positive infinity as our distance. And we want to say only for the ray to hit the movable layer. So we can use layer mask dot get mask with our name movable to specify the layer. With this change, now in our scene, only the squares can be moved and the hexagons cannot. One little improvement we can do here Rather than hard coding the layer mask in the code, we can set it in the inspector. 
To do this, we add a serialized layer mask variable called movable layers and use that in place of our get mask call. Now in the inspector, we can check as many or as few layers as we'd like to be movable. I hope you found these techniques useful. As ever, the code is on GitHub and it's linked in the description below. See you next time.